Three budget statement is expected to be presented to Parliament this week, even as government is yet to conclude a deal with the International Monetary Fund, the IMF. Already, the finance minister is under pressure to be sacked and has already faced the Senja Motion Committee and given his answers. About 92 MPs from the governing New Patriotic Party side of the House of Parliament have said that they will not take part in any proceedings if Keno Foriata is allowed to read the 2023 budget. Ghana's inflation rate for October 2022 currently stands at 40.4%, and that, and that is actually the first inflation or the highest inflation of all time. The economic hardship has caused protests amid skyrocketing increase in prices of goods and services, and it looks as though fuel is also one of the driving factors of Ghana's rising inflation. So how does the uh, government intend to manage all of this and especially as we are all expecting the budget to be read later this week. Let's pick the thoughts of um, Dr. Edu Owususa Akodia, who is a lecturer at the Department of Economics at the University of Ghana. Doc, a very good afternoon uh, to you, and thank you for joining us. Good afternoon, and thanks for having me. All right, so kindly unmute for me so we can hear you. But uh, while at that, my first question would be, inflation currently stands at 40.4%. Cost of living clearly has, uh, has been rising. What should the focus of the 2023 budget be, especially as we are looking forward to it being read later this week? Yeah, thank you. Can you hear me now? Yes. Uh, I'm muted. Yes. Okay. Um, usually when the president of the republic speaks, he gives us a hint of what you should expect in the budget. And his recent fellow Ghanaians uh, address, he mentioned about 12 points or 12 measures that he intends to undertake during the course of the period. We must also not forget that we are in talk with the IMF. And so this budget must be drawn with the IMF in, in mind. Uh, so. You mentioned the cost of living, which is usually the first thing right now that every Ghanaian talks about, uh, with attention to food and energy prices. We have seen the drivers of inflation in the country, um, food prices, imported inflation, and energy costs. So energy from fuel and then transportation, that must be addressed. I know that as a team of, from government who are in touch with some suppliers of uh, refined oil, which they call affordable oil. So if you are successful, that may help. The third driver of the energy cost is uh, exchange rates. In fact, exchange rates, in my view, is the main driver of all the other inflation or the prices of other items we have in the country. Because the exchange rate is what is driving the imported inflation. The exchange rate is what is driving fuel costs. The exchange rate is what is driving all the other prices. So if the government is able to control the city depreciation, that will help reduce food and energy prices and also tame inflation. Don't also forget that in an IMF program, one of the key pillars of the IMF program is macroeconomic stability. Within that, you have getting low and stable inflation. So the cost of living is number one. It must be addressed. Uh, let me make this recommendation. You know, when you go to other countries, they weigh foodstuffs on the scale. I think in Ghana, we have started with the meat and uh, chicken. We should have this nationwide, where cassava, plantain, and all the other foodstuffs should be weighed on a scale. In this case, no single seller can influence the prices. This will help the government to, at least in the short term, control the increment in food prices. And then the second pillar, as we should expect uh, from the budget of the IMF program, is the debt restructuring. The debt is so huge, it is hanging around our neck. The government must restructure it. Uh, and there are so many options. You can ask for a deferred payment. You can ask for a, a, a prolonged payment of interest and amortization. You can ask for debt reprofiling. You can, but the haircut, as has been mentioned by the president, should not be entertained at all. In my view, the haircut shouldn't even be an option on the table because the consequences of a haircut, the economic, social, and political consequence of a haircut is that. And that must not be an option at all on the table. 
And then the other one is the fiscal consolidation. You know, the president addressed the nation and he was talking about moving the tax GDP ratio from 13% to 20%. And so when I did the calculation, in this case, it means that if we want to grow the real tax revenue, and it must be 2.5 times the projected GDP growth rate uh, for, the, for the period. I repeat, the real tax revenue growth rate must be 2.5 times the real GDP growth rate projection for the next year. If um, what the president said about increasing the tax revenue uh, GDP ratio from 13 to 20 percent can be achieved in the next six years. And so progressively, this is how uh, tax revenue must go to achieve that. Within the fiscal consolidation too is the not only talk about revenue measures, but also talk about prudent uh, you know, expenditure management. And again, in my view, I think much of the expenditure should be geared towards growing the GDP because if you want to bring the debt GDP ratio down, it's a matter of the ratio. You are either reducing the numerator and or increasing the denominator, in this case, the GDP. So the expenditure should be spent in such a way, the money should be spent in such a way that it will increase GDP growth rate. In this case, then, you know, we can uh, create jobs, uh, grow the economy and create jobs. And that is why the attention must always be on agriculture and manufacturing. Mm. The planting for food and jobs must be improved. The one industry, one factory must be improved. These are the two main sectors that can drive the economy right. to create jobs and then, you know, reduce the cost of living for all of us. Okay, Doc, um, there is a, there's a concern that you touched on briefly, and I want to bring you back to it, having to do with the fact that the budget is expected to be presented. You've made suggestions as to what government should consider before they come to Parliament to present it. But we also know that government was confident in reaching an agreement with the IMF before uh, to conclude the budget before they come to present it. What signals are you picking regarding how far the negotiations have gone and are we very likely to get a deal before um, Thursday when, when government comes to parliament to present the budget? Okay, so we have examples. We have examples for our previous negotiations. Remember in 2015, we had the IMF program, but this year's IMF program is quite different from what we had in 2015, given the global challenges, uh, economic challenges that we're facing. So let's pick the examples from Egypt and Kenya. Egypt and Kenya had their you know, IMF programs within six to uh, eight months um, when the negotiations started. So I think we started ours somewhere around July. And so six months will be about January. And so by the first quarter of this year, we should have a program. And I understand that negotiations have gone on very smoothly, especially the staff level negotiation. Mm -hmm. You know, the staff level where they have to interrogate our figures, our data, and ask questions for the techni technocrats to answer those questions before it gets to the board and is signed by the board and the that of the presidency as of, of Ghana. So yes, the signals I'm picking is that negotiation is going on right. The staff level agreement is likely to be reached before the end of the year. And after that, the board will meet and approve it. So uh, it's not likely that uh, the board will, you know, dismiss the staff level agreement. Hardly would the board dismiss the staff level agreement or raise any major concern. Usually, when the agreement is reached at the staff level, it's a matter of a ceremonial issue where the executive or the board will sign the document for us. So very likely in the first quarter of this year, of next year, sorry, first quarter of next year, we should have the program running. And that is why this budget, which is supposed to start next uh, year, January, mm -hmm. should be drawn in such a way that it incorporates all the discussions, the agreements, the negotiations that have been, you know, contained uh, in the staff level agreement.